Yeah, it's another one of those top five Linux distro videos. Don't worry, I ain't here to spoon feed you Ubuntu derivatives or pretend that Pop! OS is like some sort of revolutionary movement. If you're expecting Zorin or elementary OS, just go ahead and leave already. Go install Chrome OS or something. I mean, just seriously, you should just not be in watching this video. It's clearly not for you. I also have to let you know that this video is not for your little cousin dual booting Ubuntu and pretending they're Neo, okay? Or your friend who thinks that Linux Mint is what powers the dark web or some crazy thing like that. And before someone says, but what about insert your precious derivative here? No. This is my list. Honestly, I like a lot of projects, but that doesn't mean they're top tier. And you might be thinking this one's for the folks who've been around a while, right? The ones who miss GNOME 2, for example, or have trust issues because of System D. Yeah, we're not going that extreme, but let's get into it. Number five, Arch Linux. Look, someone was going to say it. I use Arch, by the way. Yeah, yeah, we know. Arch deserves a mention. I'll give you that. And it's surprisingly easy to set up now, thanks to the guided installer. And if I'm honest, I don't think it was ever really that hard to install, but I digress. And sure, it's the darling of the r slash Unix porn crowd. I mean, everyone loves to slap a cat poochin theme on i3 and pretend that they're hacking the Pentagon. Seriously, I think there are like 40,000 other people on Reddit trying to get a rice setup that breaks the second that Pac-Man pushes a new update. Here's the thing. The AUR is a mess. It's a ticking time bomb maintained by people who ghost after pushing broken package builds. And if you're the kind who wants to install a Bluetooth driver from a script that hasn't been updated since 2015, yeah, good luck with that. And you might think this is great until you realize how many AUR packages are held together with duct tape and Stack Overflow comments from 2013. And if you're not careful, you'll break your system updating a font package. Seriously, you think you're building a bulletproof system from the AUR? Yeah, I got some broken package builds and dead bootloaders to sell you. But I have to be fair. If you don't use the AUR much, I think it's solid. But if you're constantly pulling from it, you're basically playing Jenga and your cat constantly jumps on the table. Like it's great until it isn't. Number four, Solus. Ah, Solus. Distro that should have taken over the desktop world, but instead decided to quietly do everything right without anyone noticing. Originally spearheaded by Ike Doherty, the project continued development and has been surprisingly solid. Great package selection, a clean build from scratch philosophy, beautiful desktop environments, and a overall solid experience. And for the love of RMS, things just work. Budgie, it's clean, slick, professional, the package manager is snappy, and the curated software selection makes it feel like an actual product, not a random GitHub repo duct taped together. The only problem, no one even knows it exists. It's like the underrated band from the 90s you discovered after they broke up. Great sound, no tour dates, but hey, maybe that's a good thing. Number three. Three, OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. Yeah, I know. I've talked my fair share of smack about OpenSUSE in the past, but here we are, and I gotta admit, it's earned its spot. I too got the corporate vibes. I remember gas nightmares and confusing branding. Tumbleweed is rolling release done right. The snapshot and rollback feature alone should be standard on pretty much every distro by now. Screw something up, roll it back, no tears, no Reddit posts, right? You want to use flat packs without jumping through hoops? Done. You want 30 different package managers that all somehow work together without eating your lunch? 
Welcome to SUSE country. It also has a massive repo of developer tools. You want to compile from source like it's 2005, like me? Be my guest. It's not for everyone. Some people absolutely hate it. But if you're willing to get over Yast looking like it was built in 2003, I think you'll find a lot of love. Me, I'm just sipping my coffee and appreciating that it hasn't crashed yet. Number two, NixOS. Now this is where things get spicy. This could have just as easily been number one. Hell, in terms of innovation, I think it is number one in so many ways. NixOS is a distro that makes the rest of us feel like we're using Linux with training wheels. Like the entire OS is basically like a config file. And once you understand that, you start seeing computing in a completely different way. Everything is reproducible. Everything is rollbackable, if that's a word. You want containerization without Docker? Done. You want to build your system like Lego? Nix has you covered the problem. It's got a steep learning curve like Kubernetes. You will break things. You will stare at Nick's language docs for hours and you will question your life's choices. But once it clicks, it's like digital enlightenment. So if you're willing to put in the time, you'll come out the other end with a setup that's bulletproof and borderline magical. It's fully declarative. Rollbacks, it's a cinch. And custom configurations, it's infinitely reproducible. Your system becomes its own containerized reproducible version control beast. Like I said, it could have easily been number one. Unfortunately, most people just aren't ready for that level of commitment. Seriously, it makes art to look like a Fisher-Price toy if I do say so myself. Number one, Fedora. Whether atomic or just classic, Fedora has quietly become the distro for people who actually want to get things done and always want bleeding edge without getting stabbed in the gut in the process. They're moving into the atomic desktop space with silver blue, kino white, and now the atomic desktops under uBlue. This is game changing. They've embraced immutability with silver blue and the new atomic spins, snapshots, yep, rollbacks, easy, SE Linux, on by default, Wayland, default, Pipewire, default, and improved. They are just not messing around. For real, if you're feeling brave, check out uBlue and Bazite. These projects are just pushing Fedora into the future with the first cloud-native desktop experience. We now have gaming-ready builds and containers that just work. It's like someone actually listened to the devs and the desktop users, and they decided to give them both what they actually wanted. No joke. You could run this for like the next 10 years and never reinstall and still be ahead of most people. The best part? These are skills that just get you paid. This is what modern DevOps and cloud-native workflows look like. And if you're learning it just by using your desktop, it's basically training for actual DevOps work without the boring classes and Zoom meetings. I mean, I'm telling you, unless you really enjoy distro hopping, you could run Fedora plus uBlue for the rest of your life and never need to switch. It's literally that good. And mark my words, uBlue is going to take over Linux and probably the computer world altogether. You might as well get on board now before it starts showing up on job listings. Oh, and you might say some of those things about NixOS. Well, Atomic desktops can run Nix packages as well. So yeah, that's it. That's the list. You're free to disagree. Scream in the comments, write me an email in Source Sans Pro or whatever makes you feel hurt. No Linux Mint, no Manjaro, no Deepend. Well, sorry, not sorry. I just have to say this list isn't about chasing trends or pretty login screens. This is about like a solid future proof operating systems that respect your time and your intelligence. Maybe just smash that like button if you still remember dial up. And if you don't, just be quiet and learn something and still hit the like button, of course. Subscribe if you've ever recompiled a kernel on purpose and drop a comment if you think Gentoo should have made the list. I'll 
be sure to read it on my pager. And for the love of everything sacred, please don't at me with like Linux Mint or some nonsense like that. Please just don't. Okay, seriously, I can smell an ISO a continent away, and this smells an awful lot like the rats I smell in the UUTILS camp. You can watch that video right here. And uh, what are your top five? Leave me a comment. Tell me why. I'd really like to know. But be sure to check out my Discord server. Check out my merch. Think about gifting me a cup of coffee like Russell did. Hey, you're awesome, Russell. He's gifted me 30 cups of coffee in just the within the last couple of weeks. Uh, like, this is uber awesome. And as always, you can binge watch my stuff. And until next time, keep it weird, keep it nerdy, and keep it Linux. Later, geek.